like no other car in the world. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome, everybody. Mike Orman along with Phil Raftery, and we are just about set now to meet the starting lineups between Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Let's turn it over right now to the mayor of Rome, New York, who's also the PA announcer, Carl Eilenberg. And now, fans, the starting lineups for tonight's Big East battle between the Panthers and the Orange Men. At forward for the University of Pittsburgh, a 6'6 sophomore from Akron, Ohio, number 34, Jerome Lane. For Syracuse from Corcoran High School in Syracuse, New York, 6'5", senior co-captain number 25, Howard Chris. For the Panthers from Detroit, Michigan, 6'5", junior, wearing number 33, Demetrius Gore. For the Orange from Detroit Northern High School in Detroit, Michigan, 6'9", freshman, Big East freshman of the week, number 44, Derek Coleman. At center for the Panthers, 6'10", junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 32, Charles Smith. At center for the Orange, 6'10", junior from the American School in Athens, Greece, Big East Player of the Week, number four, Ronnie Cycli. 6'3", sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey, at one of the guard spots for the Panthers, number 11, Mike Goodson. For the Orange from Spingarn High School in Washington, D.C., six foot sophomore number 20, Sherman Douglas. And from Buffalo, New York, six foot senior number 14 at the guard spot for the Panthers, Curtis Aiken. For the Orange, at 6'3", a senior from Pittsburgh Mendon High School in Rochester, New York, number 11, co captain, Greg Mundro. The head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers, Paul Evans. For the Orange, Jim Beheim. And we're just about set. The Syracuse Orangemen undefeated so far in Big East play. Pittsburgh, 0-7 in this building. We'll be back. Zenith's clean, cube-shaped styling gives you so much screen from side to side and corner to corner, it makes watching television a whole new ball game. Zenith. Quality. Zenith's digital TV with teletext has instant news, weather, or sports information built in. So even during important programs, this television always knows the score. Zenith. Quality. really nothing mysterious about our tremendous growth. We've become the largest Chrysler Plymouth BMW dealer in the Laurel Highlands. Why? Because we have an award-winning sales and service staff that truly cares about you. The pride is back, born in Johnstown. My favorite part of the game. Keys to winning, Bill. <laughs> uh, one of these nights they're going to come through. Pitt averages 14 offensive rebounds a game. they got to do it tonight, and they've got to go at Coleman and Cycli. Bring the action to them. Create some fouls. Syracuse. And Cycli, if he has a big night, forget it. Put the lights out. They've got to run effectively and, of course, finish the break as they do as well as anybody in the country. All right. We are set to go, and this is going to be fun. All... 28 or 30,000, however many are here, are on their feet. Goodson strips. Sherman Douglas knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Syracuse ball. This crowd in the carrier dome will stay on their feet until the Syracuse Orange men make their first basket. Howard Trish will inbound. Uh, Jimmy Beheim uh, remembers Navy last year with Coach Evans. Sure so he does. There's a little meaning into this game beyond the norm. Paul Evans, of course, the coach of Navy. Came in and thrashed Syracuse here in the Dome in the NCAA. 2-3. This is Greg Monroe, senior co-captain, 11. Derek Coleman's the fine freshman. Sherman Douglas, sophomore point guard, down in the corner. Cycle Monroe had it and passed it up. Now, you mentioned it takes a while to get set. Got set that time. When he's set, he's pretty tough. 
some debris on the floor, the hold, the hold up of play. I would look for Pitt in that 2-3 zone to step out a little more, Mike, because as you recall, against St. John's, uh, uh, Shelton Jones was able to get the basketball easily in a three-second yep. lane. They can't do that with Cycli and that guy. Uh, going to be a great one. Derek Coleman. Oh, he sure is going to be a great one. Uh, let's see how well play Syracuse plays in this building. Straight man to man. Jerome Lane out top. Monroe has got Aiken. Cycli and Smith have teamed up. Inside Lane. Cycli got there late, but Lane put it down anyway. You know, at BC, the coaches were telling us, here's a quick break to Monroe. He'll try again. Coaches were telling us from Pitt, they put Charles Smith high and put Lane low. Smith, nice feed from Goodson, and Cycli picks up foul number one. Remind you of the Celtics? Get the ball down fast. Ronnie Cycli did not oh, see the basketball, and Jimmy Beheim up right on Ronnie for that mistake. And he's back to the ball. Charles Smith will be at the line. Smith, the 6'10", 225-pound junior out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. A legitimate All-American candidate. Interesting theory in a sense of Smith high, Mike. He's bringing Cycli up in the man-to-man, -man, so it takes away that shot blocking. And Jerome Lane, with some good inside strength, puts a little pressure on Derek Coleman early. Smith, a 75% free throw shooter. A little pressure, 2-2-1. Two, two, Pass him. Slow it down more than anything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Huh? Cycli finds Trish open. Got it. Steady Eddie. The glue. Just does a little bit like Mark Jackson, what has to be done for Syracuse. Both teams off the mark quickly, as we expected. Goodson looks inside. Smith gets doubled immediately. That's, they have to go right back at him. There he goes. Powers his way up, and Coleman and Cycli both there for the block. Good help. Sherman Douglas right side to Monroe. And a technical foul quickly whistled on Paul Evans on the Pittsburgh bench. Well, they know he's here. Why, Bill? That's one of those I think they like him early. I think he felt Charles Smith got bumped on that move baseline where you mentioned they collaborated on the block. But I think maybe it's just a message to the young men with the stripes on. Douglas missing the first. Now, he had a tough technical foul against Georgetown, if you remember. Yes. And I was sort of disappointed because, one, he really didn't do anything other than ask for a double dribble, and the referees didn't have to look at him. And, of course, he was run down with the T. But here's the move with Smith. You saw him getting a little bit of a bump, but Cycli, in a sense, standing straight up. I think it was a good non-call, but I think more to let everybody know he's here. Opposite end from where Paul Evans was, too, mm -hmm. so he doesn't have the benefit of that replay. It did look like a good no call. Trish penetrates. Cycle the offensive board, but it's slapped away by Lane. Now picked off again by Syracuse. Monroe and Lane. First rebound of the night. He'll have a ton before he's through. <laughs> this time, Rome was built in the day. His nickname is Rome. There's Lane outside. Coleman's going to cover him. Aiken cycling over the top of Jerome Lane. Here comes Monroe. Three on one. Monroe. Trish. Traveling violation underneath on Trish. Good reaction by Pitt, but a beautiful looking break. Everybody filled the lanes beautifully. Sherman Douglas had a choice here either side. Good fake left. And of course, the walk at the end of this. Trish, yeah, sliding the feet. Excellent call. Looks like Douglas might have got away with one, too. Goodson outside for three. That's been the difference for Pitt, I think, in this run. And, of course, it's part of the seasoning, I believe, of the Pitt club. Goodson coming along. Mike Goodson, just a sophomore. Did not play much at all as a freshman. Cycli too hard off the glass. And Gore, this time, starts the break. Finds Smith ahead of the field. And well, that should be two oh, and it's two. Be on Cycli. Yeah, it could well be. Oh. It's also the second on cycling. I don't know why Ronnie would do that. I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. It's his second foul. Puts him in a hole. Just should have let him. I, was, I think his, he didn't want his friend to show him up. Yeah, give him you know, the dunk. Of course, we know they're both buddies, room together on the trip to Europe, the Goodwill Games, but uh, not a good one. And this is a tough call, too, and the ball. 
Intentional foul. Now Jim Jimmy. Beheim realizing what the call was is up talking to Larry Lembo. Simple call, really. Simple call, I think. Two plus the ball. Intentional foul. Come on, Jimmy. No question about it. I agree with you, Bill. Of course, in the NBA, it's the breakaway, they call it. Well, if you're going to have the rule, I mean, you, officials could use that little piece of tape as a training film. Oh, you know? And it, it's intentional in college. When you're shooting the basketball, of course, it's the two plus the basketball. Smith with his second point of the night ties the game at seven, but Cycli with 16.58 to play in the first half on the bench with two personal fouls. Alley oop Smith. Let's see if they try to pick in the middle. Didn't work that oh, time. Oh, what a pass. Douglas. Yeah. Oh, misses the dunk. Why, Sherman? Just lay it in. Other way, Gore. Look at Coleman. Gets the roll. What a pass he made. The loop on the money. Looked like Elway and Sims, didn't he? <laughs> and or Sims, I should say. What a game they both played yesterday. Pittsburgh grabbing the early lead. I'm sure one of Paul Evans' priorities was to get this crowd out of the game. Brower walked with it. And the Pittsburgh bench is up and clapping hands. Unbelievable, isn't it? Kids like the icing on the cake. Sherman Duck is all alone trying to arouse this 28-plus. Inside Gore on the baseline again. Doubled quickly. Good kick. Jerome Lane, and the foul goes on Brower, getting there late. Now, today, at practice, at the shooter, I'm like, Paul Evans was really on pit about it. Snap the pass. Kick it around. Don't hold on it. And you'll see the ball movement around the perimeter, then the step to Lane. Of course, they worked on that cheat step. Excellent move. Jerome. We'll shoot two. A 68% free throw shooter. I'll tell you the number that's crazy on this kid. He has 109 offensive rebounds already this season. Not bad. That was uh, some of our players' careers. Well, I tell you, it's that's two and a half times what Cycli has. He's the uh, leading offensive rebounder on Syracuse. Monroe with the up quick. Pitt's doing a good job getting back on defense. Still a 2 3. They're stepping up a little bit to take away that pre second area between the foul. Right there. Derek Coleman. Lane, a rebound. <laughs> and a man sized rebound. Four on one. Lane. And he did the right thing. He anticipated Mike Goodson going to the box. He didn't. 15 48 to play in the half. Pitt by three. The most punishing road in Europe is not the Appian Way in Italy. You will not find it in a remote section of the Tyrolean Alps. Or even some medieval village. Mercedes-Benz engineers would say they've built it here, in Sindelfingen, West Germany. A test of strength more brutal than any road. Punishing the car for weeks on end. Because in their quest for durability, Mercedes-Benz engineers just don't know when to stop. Give me a light. Bud Light. Oh, the chili. <laughs> if you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Look, give me a light. No, uh, Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. We are back in the Carrier Dome. Pittsburgh up by three here early, and here's Lane on the break, Bill. A lot of people have this body, but not the desire to rebound. And, of course, we mentioned last week how good he is at finishing the break. Here, Mike Goodson doesn't go to the box and actually causes the turnover. Excellent in the middle. Maybe better than the guards. Jerome Lane. As you see, Pitt off very quickly here. It'll be Syracuse ball to down three. Pittsburgh again showing their strength on the boards, led by Jerome Lane. Better than 13 rebounds a game. Good start for Pitt. They seem comfortable They're playing really within good. them. Yep. Very confident. Chatting defensively to 2 3. You see the post people rotating for Syracuse. Jim Beheim going to the bench. Goal with the steal. Off to Aiken. Takes it himself. Offensive foul. Curtis Aiken. That should have been a touchback. They should wipe the goal out. 
Everybody from Pitt wants the basket. But that would have been a nice touch right back, you know? Just a little extra. Again, Aiken trying to do things, which you can't argue with. No. Nope. But you love to see them kick it back. Yeah, sure had Gore free on the other oh, side. Oh, Demetrius had done a nice job defensively to set the whole sequence up. Now, Jim Beham has gone way into his bench. Steve Thompson, number 32, freshman guard out there. Brow is in off the bench. So is Harid, number 33. Coleman stays on the floor with Monroe, and Aiken steals the lazy pass. Aiken again to the hoop. That this time he got it. That's the way to play. Stevie Thompson with a lazy pass along the perimeter, and Aiken, a senior, alertly stepping into the passing lane. Hit out by five here, under 15 minutes to play first half. Brower, good look for Thompson, but Smith with the block over the top, picked off by Lane. Break to Aiken, and it's stolen by Monroe. The Orange look to run the other way. Greg Monroe, the pull-up. Rebound on Lane, foul. Oh, a traveling violation. Guess who got that rebound now? Jerome Lane. That was up for grabs as he tried to spin out of it. He forgot one item. Put the ball on the floor. Well, he got bumped there pretty good by Steve Thompson, but the officials let him play. Hit by five. Howard Trish is going to come back in next whistle along with Sherman Douglas. So it's a brief stay on the bench for those two starters. Three southpaws on the floor. Got Thompson. Coleman and Monroe for Syracuse. Jim Bayon can put an all left-handed team out there. Uh -huh. Herman Hari, another lefty, and he walked with it. He got two with that. I think the first time he may have done it as well. Trish and Douglas in, as I said. Let's see, Thompson and Hari will go to the bench. So Brower stays in the middle. Cycle remains over there on the Syracuse bench with his two personal fouls. Two, three. Been in it the last couple of trips. Actually, this makes Pitt patient, I think, playing against the zone. Forces them to pry a little more. Smith high. Good position there by Brower. Smith really wanted to go to the hoop. Side gore in traffic, lost it. But Lane got a piece of it and now went off Trish out of bounds. I don't know what Demetrius was thinking, do you? No. Oh, he should have just kicked it out. Pitt caught a break there. Fortunate, you're right, to get the basketball back. They run a little high-low sequence. It'll get Lane the ball high, and he'll dump it down to Smith. Down to five seconds on the shot clock, and Goodson walks with it as he tries to make that little up fake. A little crossover move. He just can't do it anymore. Sure can't. So the Pittsburgh lead stays at five. And now they're close to 30,000, trying to get themselves in the game. All the orange peels, huh? Pitt's done a great job of taking the crowd out of this game so far. Look at it, can't let him post up Gore. He's trying to play Coleman. Trish, the penetration move. Nice follow by Brower. Very alert. Eric Brower averages just three points a game. Smith turns, Brower got him in the arm. But Charles is attracting such a crowd. If he could once look opposite at the elbow, which is the foul line extended, Smith could make a nice kick. You see all the bodies around him. Brower on one side and Trish recovering low. But if he, right at the foul line, he's got an open jump shot for Goodson or Aiken. Smith, who's two points tonight come from the free throw line, is back there again. Free throw. Pretty good blackjack player, too. That's what we hear. So we're told. A couple of penniless players going back to Pittsburgh after this trip. That's what we hear. Got them both. Pitt clinging to that five-point lead. Again, the pressure more to just slow Syracuse down. Monroe for three. Lane, another rebound, out quickly to Aiken. Again, the selective break for Pittsburgh, and Monroe Douglas, Douglas outside with the foul. Well, they've been stressing that hand contact, you know, the hands on the body, but it's almost becoming synonymous when you say oh, sure. Pittsburgh rebound, Lane. Yes. <laughs> he goes after each earned shot. He's got a real sense for it. You can tell, I mean, he 
I mean, he's not, I mean, he's a big kid, 6'6 six, six and about 220, but uh, not that many 6'6 six, six kids lead the country in rebounds. No, he's quick to the basketball, but you're right, he is. Not given. There's that high low. Nice play. Nice cut, but he couldn't get the layup down. And Brower now the loose ball to Smith. Gives the up fake. Hits the jumper. Uh, NBA move. Charles Smith is pumped up. The pump, the lean, and Coleman wisely not fouling. But they look extremely excited about their play pick. They should be. They're up seven. Confident. Jim Beheim's going to have to come back with Cycle. Brower hits a hook. Semi hook, huh? I'll call it a hook. <laughs> Two, three. Let's see if Pitt handle this. They've been doing a good job. Aiken. Believe it or not, they didn't need it one pass and a jumper. They've been really dissecting the zone. Aiken, I think, trying to get himself in the game yeah. more than anything else. Very much so. Nice Inside. highlight here. Coleman. Broward doing a good job. The semi hook. And then a good dump low for the freshman, Derek Coleman. Pittsburgh will go to their bench for the first time tonight as Rod Brooklyn is now up at the scorer's table. Hit by three. Again, they have been effective going inside to Smith. And he, in turn, looks to Lane or Cutter. Now it's Lane on the other side. Oh, Tough shot. In traffic. I just thought against St. John's, if Pitt had done it, an errant pass here, Sherman Douglas, they had done inside, they're a tough team. Another turnover for Syracuse, 11.04 to go in the first half. Pitt's still up five. Anthony's announces a very, very special event. An extraordinary sale. So extraordinary, so spectacular, with prices so low, well, you'll never again be able to look so beautiful for so little. Coats, jackets, strollers, magnificent fox, mink, lynx, sable, coyote, save hundreds. Anthony's fur sale, as big and as beautiful as all outdoors. Hurry to our perfectly beautiful sale at Anthony's now. There's no place like home, and yours is now more valuable than ever because of tax reform and U.S. Bank's Home Equity Credit. Home Equity Credit is an interest-deductible personal line of credit that's as easy as writing a check. Use it for a timely investment opportunity, a retirement plan, a dream vacation, or medical expenses. And the interest on Home Equity Credit remains tax-deductible. Home Equity Credit, a dream come true from U.S. Bank. Pittsburgh up five, and if you like college basketball, just stay in your seat for the rest of the week here. Double headers every night this week here on ESPN. Connecticut and Boston College, a Big East doubleheader tomorrow night, followed by Villanova at number 15, St. John's. And then we move along on Wednesday night. Georgetown against Providence. That is going to be World War III. Memphis State against Louisville, the second game. And then on Thursday night, still another doubleheader. Number 13, Duke against Georgia Tech. And Washington takes on UCLA. So you can just hoop yourselves out here. To sleep, week. huh? That's right. I, I'm not pleasantly surprised because at our production meeting, I just felt good about Pitt. Yeah, you really did. I, I, I think they're close. They need one of these to get over that obstacle. Charles Smith hits outside. That's that high-low set against BC. I just think Paul Evans figured against St. John's, he can get enough open shots. This way, Lane can work his magic low. Because Pittsburgh lead of the night, seven, cycle right back. Lane rips it off. That body help by Charles Smith. Hit a chance to go nine. Goodson. Aiken. Cycle clears. Steve Thompson and Greg Monroe, the backcourt right now for Syracuse. Brower, who played well, stays in the game. There he is. Cycli, the follow won't Great. go. Cycli, another. He got fouled, too. Great board work. But Curtis Aiken has to wait for a basket. Aiken hits oh. the layup. Just as I said, he has to wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Curtis, relax. If he could get into the flow instead of dictating the flow. Pitt would be in great shape. Interesting move here by Jim Beheim, Brower, and Cycli on the floor at the same time. 
an attempt to uh, neutralize Lane a little bit? Could, could very well be. Let's give Coleman a blow. Little Offensive charge. foul, Greg Monroe. He springs up and is angry at the call. First foul on Monroe. That's the fourth on Syracuse. They've got the sixth on Syracuse. Excuse me. Pittsburgh playing a clean game in the officials' eyes so far. Here's the freshman Brook in 21. Aiken loops it. Lane punched it back. I'm looking at Paul Evans on the Pittsburgh bench to see who he was talking to, and it's Jerome Lane. I don't think Paul thinks they need any punch passes. Well, here yeah, he'd like, he'd like him to catch it with two. And believe it or not, Aiken was moving back out of the lane he had passed the ball, which is creative. That's what you should do. Move so the man doesn't know where you are when he turns back. Douglas, you see, back in the ball game for Syracuse. Thompson is running mate at guard. And that's a walk on Sherman Douglas. Well, Syracuse just cannot get on track here, Bill. Uh, yeah, it, it's amazing. Coleman, of course, out of the game, they don't seem to be able to get the ball to the spots in the three-second area. A great improvement defensively by Pitt since the last ball game, or last St. John's game we saw. Pitt had a game against Boston College on Saturday night. They won that one pretty handily. Good try, huh? Dirk Brown, very active. Really is trying hard out there. Aitken hits baseline, and the lead is now nine. Within the flow, Mike. I mean, yeah. Curtis can get his points. Just relax. Syracuse, too, bouncing back after a tough St. John's game. I thought they might be, to use a basketball term, flat. How can you be flat with 28,000 people? Or so? <laughs> Seriously. No, I agree, but... Uh, you know, sometimes you rest on your laurels. Douglas hits the bucket on the baseline and a foul. That should help him. Huh? Yeah. Brooking over. Might be able to get the crowd in this uh, game. A you little have bit. to reach inside when you're not playing well. And Douglas had walked earlier. He's trying to create some things. And again, one of the reasons Syracuse is tough. Douglas has some answers. Spingarn High School will be at the line as soon as the officials get something straight. Paul Evans on his feet over there in front of the Pittsburgh bench. I don't know if Jim Burr was injured. Believe it or not, he's... I just heard him say, I'm okay. Yeah. He must have gotten banged. And a look of concern, genuinely, I think. He's pointing to his side. I think it might have been a stitch or a cramp. He's over talking, explaining to Jim Beheim right now what's going on. Douglas misses the free throw. And Pitt worked hard against the press. Evans felt they might throw it at him, and Jimmy holding it off didn't do it at all from what I'm told against St. John's, huh? Smith good up fake, and he buries it. <laughs> you think Charles likes to get away from that net around him in a low post? Smith is in double figures now with 10. Again, Pittsburgh by nine. Eight minutes left to play here in this first half, and Syracuse can't even get somebody to bring the ball in. Well, what happened, Mike, is one of the pit players hit the ball, and Jim Burr stopped play and chastised him. Leave the ball alone. You know, Syracuse very flat, though, on the offensive end. You see the post up begging for the basketball by Cycli. Cycli short. There's Coleman. How is it up and in? He's got a nose as well, doesn't he? Keeps the hands up high. Nobody with more than four points, though, for Syracuse. Lane kicking it out. Aiken passes up the three. Overload left. Goodson got it. Overload left. Good kick back to Goodson. Three from Mike Goodson. Hit in double figures. Up ten. Thompson looks to answer. Nice rebound. rebound. Trish and a strong one. Tipped out, though. Aiken the loose ball. Goodson was ahead of the pack. Curtis. Inside. Nice. Nice Lane one. for two. And that's the composure Curtis Aiken has to have. Control the basketball. Don't force it in. The Orange are taking a timeout. They need it. They're down a dozen. If you just ask for a light beer, give me a light. You never know what you'll get. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> 
No, actually, uh, Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Yours? No, as everything else. Give me a light. Showtime. It's just a light. It began as a new way of thinking about the relationship between the automobile and the road. It evolved into an automotive suspension system like none before. The Mercedes-Benz Multilink Independent Rear Suspension System. Five individual links per wheel precisely interacting to achieve handling stability as never before. Helping to make the 300 class the most technologically advanced automobiles in Mercedes-Benz history. Welcome back to Syracuse, everybody. Mike Gorman along with Phil Raftery and a surprise in the making. Pittsburgh, a 12-point lead over the 17-1 Syracuse Orangeman. Charles Smith having himself a half. Well, a happy youngster. That's that little pump that he's used a couple of times. But again, I just think the maneuver of getting Charles outside led the tank roam lane in low. And then they've got that nice high-low passing sequence. So. Charles, everybody's All-American. Out of the gate, pretty darn good. He sure is out of the gate well, and Pitt really wants this one up here. They have never won a game, as we told you off the top in the Carrier Dome, and they are one and seven in Big East play against Syracuse. Again, the Orange come in 17 and one. They are undefeated in Big East play. Undefeated, that is, till tonight. Douglas, got it. He made a cut down, and all the big guys were up, and that might be something the coaches of Syracuse and Mayheim picked up, that the back line is open because they're all trying to play to post people. Here come the 28,000 trying to get back in the game. Smith, couple the, of fakes, hits. Heck of a goal, but I thought he should have kicked it to Mike Goodson. Smith, a big first half with 12, and that is the Pittsburgh lead. And you see the time. No fouls on Charles Smith. He can really be active defensively as Kicks he was there. to Aiken. Brooklyn is a trailer. Aiken rolls it in. Pretty darn good first half for Pitt. I guess. 14-point Pittsburgh lead. I don't think, other than the opening tap, I don't think Syracuse has had a fast break. Cycley hits a turnaround. Well, they forced him pretty high, though. I wouldn't mind Cycley taking that 15-footer. Oh, yeah. Fading away. So they're doing a good job defensively, but Syracuse on the ropes. Not able to handle that zone, and offensively, Pitt getting it wherever they want. Man to man now. Five and a half to go in the half. Good patience again. The high-low, this time lane high. Lane strong move, oh. strong move. Off the incorrect leg as well. Went up on the right leg. Cycli, good up fake that time. Can't roll it in though, Lane the rebound. Bullet pass to Smith, half court. That's one they didn't need. They're lucky to convert that pass. That pass it was a good one. Oh. Oh, sure hope you get that outlet out quickly, Dan. Good cut by Brooken, and this is the kind of basketball Pitt needs. Oh, Rod, Brooken hits. Well, Aiken did not look for the shot. He looked for the play first. 39-23, 16-point Pittsburgh lead. You haven't called Coleman much. He hasn't touched where he can be a threat. A couple of follows. Douglas knocks it down from the corner. Seven points for Sherman Douglas, who's the high scorer tonight for Syracuse. Defense, though, is what Syracuse needs. A couple of strong defensive trips. Smith knocked away by Trish out of bounds. Pittsburgh ball. Charles has to catch the ball and throw it back. Now everybody resets. He gets rid of all the debris around them. The smaller and kick it right back in. And then kick it right back. Stay with it. Or fake the reverse and dump it down. You see Pittsburgh shooting the lights out 67%. A read back in the ball game. Smith getting his first rest in Tico Cooper. You see in. Quick trap. Very quick trap. Did he try to shake it up a little? Aiken down in the corner was shrugging his shoulders. Coleman tipped it away from Lane, and that was a great <laughs> battle to watch those two, two go great after players. Harid will pull it back out. And the 
throw to Douglas. Hit quite content in the zone. Coleman all along. Coleman rolls it in. Uh, Brooklyn got caught behind, could never regain. Here's a bad pass. One of the things occasionally that Pitt will do, good control, all of a sudden the fear that that man had was forcing it. Be effective in your judgment. Paul Evans will try to rein them in a bit. 336 to play here in the half. Pitt by a dozen. It was the ultimate test of endurance, equivalent to more than a lap around the world in eight and a half days. This Mercedes-Benz traveled 31,000 miles, averaging over 154 miles per hour, stopping only seconds at a time for fuel and fresh drivers. Indeed, only seconds were needed, because during the entire trip, not a single mechanical failure occurred. High performance is exciting. High performance and reliability is Mercedes-Benz. To break free. To reach new heights. To accept the challenge. To master a more demanding world. Feel the pride. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. Three and a half to play first half. Pittsburgh is up by a dozen. Don't forget to stick around. Coming up at halftime, we are going to see the results of the three-point poll. Host John Saunders will be back in the studio. Also, the coaches' poll results. And Dr. Edward Stites will be live in the studio. You going to be chatting with him, Bill? Uh, is Dick Vidal going to straighten him out on the rules? As you told me earlier in the year, they called the three-pointers Stites in New England, didn't well, they? They did for a while. <laughs> oh, if you have a problem with a rule, call Ed. Springfield University. Springfield College. Monroe trying to kick it in. He had a shot, and there's Lane tipping it away. Lane now will pick it up and run the break. It's still a three on two, and now they'll pull it out. Brooking inside. Lane again. Good screen. He got Coleman baseline. Good entry pass as well. I don't know how you can play them if they go inside. Lane and Smith have combined for 22 up front. 1-2-2 now. Subtle change. Good high-low. Coleman. They got a T2 on Derek Coleman. Yep. Grabbing the rim. John Clarity really given no room there. He had a call, and Jimmy Beheim doesn't like it. But this is a pretty sequence. The switch to the 1-2-2, they slide baseline. Douglas again, he had done it earlier, able to come up with it. Here's the nice looking pass, but look at how long, and really there's no problem with an injury or fear of an injury. No. He wouldn't do that in his playground. They wouldn't replace the rim. Two shots, guys. Only three team fouls called on Pittsburgh in what might be their best half of basketball this year. Coleman misses the first. Derek, a 66% free throw shooter out of Detroit Northern High School, a consensus high school All-American. I think they rubbed the uh, the T out. John Clardy changed his mind. I guess he, he did. He must have been talked out of they it. They signaled it. He sure Monroe did. missing for three and booking a big rebound. One of the officials must have said he had the right to come down. He thought he might be injured. I don't believe it. No argument from the pit bench. Brooken bangs at home baseline. Brooken has really proved to be a pleasant surprise for this club. Monroe, no. cycle alone for the follow. Ronnie right there. Thought he should have put it right back up quickly. Yep. 43-29 pit as we hit the two-minute mark of the first half. There's the kick. Now they go right back to him. Brooken. A tap by Aiken nearly ran. Here comes the Syracuse fast break. A read on a wing. Blocking foul is going to go against Michael Goodson. Good call, too. Excellent call on the open floor. These bang-bang plays are tough on officials. Good outlet. 
Sherman Douglas and right there Reed doing everything to avoid. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're a little mm -hmm. closer, but I like mm -hmm. it though. The angle. Everybody in Elizabeth didn't like it. No. Elizabeth, New Jersey. We might split our vote on that one, though. I'm tough enough on those officials. But again, the Sherman Douglas trying to get things started. He's the igniter of this club. I like the couple of plays on the baseline, that outlet. Trying to get him cooking. A read, not a good free throw shooter at just 47% coming in. 6'7 sophomore who's had some injury problems. Played for Bob Wade down at Dunbar High School in Baltimore. Chris Walker going down there. Good oh, steal. Nice steal by Lane. Look at the control. That's what you want your guards to do. I think he could be a guard. Oh, he's, he's going to be a terrific player. Smith in a lot of traffic. Won't go down. Look Loose at on the floor. Foul Smith over the back. Look at these guys play inside, though, Mike. It's really a, the high red district. You got your premier players, your marquee players in Lane and Smith. I think Charles got to make a quicker move. Now he's stuck. Very fortunate to control himself he and sure not was walk. Stuck, wasn't he? he was. He doesn't have. He's got to kick it quickly. Regain post position. Keith Hughes into the ball game. Coleman rolls it in and gets a foul. Soft, isn't it? Oh, real soft. Real but soft. Uses all the iron. He wants the basketball. They haven't gone to him too much. He's got eight points. He's the leading Syracuse scorer now here in the first half. But this has not been a typical Syracuse first half. And you give credit to Pittsburgh for that. And you see Syracuse struggling just about everywhere here. Pitt's got to think that we got to keep it over 10. And Syracuse, the opposite. Well, this minute and 14. Pitt should really look to get to the free throw line. No jumper in this sequence. Eric Coleman waving a fist trying to get the crowd more into this game. Little delay now. Pitt showing some composure. Brooklyn pops out. And Goodson comes around looking for the ball. 18 on the shot clock. Under a minute to play in the half. One four. Oh, they got this on Goodson. Offensive foul. Two on Goodson. And guess who picked it up, Mike? Sherman Douglas. Heads up play. Mike Goodson should have just stopped and ran the other way into the three second area. Pat Kavanaugh is going to check in, make that the third foul on Goodson. He's the only Pittsburgh player in any trouble. Paul Evans is going to get him out for the final 44 seconds here. Douglas will go to the line one and one. And Syracuse has a chance to make a little mini run here. A chance. Lane, another rebound. Now Pittsburgh can take the final shot if they want it. I would think they would. They were trying before. Look at the hands of Douglas. Steal oh. by Douglas as he just picked Kavanaugh's pocket. Spins. Nice move. Oh. Blocked from behind by Brooken. What a defensive play by Rod Brooken. And if Kavanaugh wasn't lying out of bounds, they could have kept playing. The ball was blocked right into Pat Kavanaugh. But you're right. Rod Brooken, don't give up. Hughes inbounds quickly to Monroe. And now Syracuse may look for one. Yes, they will. Jim Beheim holding up the one figure on his sideline. Douglas puts it on the floor. Ten seconds. This is the time you'd be tempted to go for three, believe it or not. Not with Coleman, this guy, though. No. Fall away. Rebound. Hughes. Tough one on the other side. Official had a jump ball called. That's going to do it for the half. Pittsburgh, a strong first half here at Syracuse. And they're up by 11. The Panthers, 43. And the Orangemen, 32. I've seen a lot of big plays on the football field, but I've never seen a sale as big as the one going on right now at Wheeler's. You've got that right, Jack. It's a 10th anniversary sale at Wheeler Cadillac Pontiac. And to celebrate our first decade of excellence, we've cut prices to the bone. For example, 
This nicely equipped 1987 Pontiac 6000 has been reduced to only $10,400. So see us for 10th anniversary sale super savings. Remember, you can trust Wheeler Cadillac Pontiac. Tax reform. How will it affect your IRA deduction for 1986? The fact is, most of the changes affecting IRAs won't take place until the 1987 tax year. This means you can deduct the full amount of your bank and trust IRA contribution on your 1986 tax return. At Bank and Trust, we'll give you straight answers to all your questions on IRAs. Don't be misinformed about an investment as important as your future. Miguel Mendez and his classmates are growing up on a very special island. An island blessed with palm-lined beaches, exotic tropical forests, and gentle trade winds. Their island is also a model for peace and progress in the Caribbean. An island of happiness and pride. Miguel Mendez and his friends are growing up on Puerto Rico, the shining star of the Caribbean. College Basketball, Pittsburgh at Syracuse, brought to you by the U.S. Navy, Live the Adventure, and by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to halftime here of the first game of our ESPN Big Monday doubleheader. The theme of this halftime and our second halftime the three-point play. We're going to discuss who likes it, who doesn't like it, who wants it moved back, and who wants it left exactly where it is. Joining me now is Dr. Edward Stites, who is the director and editor of the NCAA Rules Committee and also the director of athletics at Springfield College. Welcome, Dr. Stites. And first of all, very simply, we'll let you get to the rest of uh, this mess or so-called mess in just a moment. Why? Why did you decide to put this rule in? The game's been the way it has for a long time. Why change it? First of all, John, it's not a mess. I think it's one of the greatest additions history will show that we've added to this great, great collegiate game. Just quickly, John, we researched the three-point field goal attempt for the past five years at various and sundry distance in some 20 conferences. The year before we put the rule in, we had researched it at 19.9 from the center of the basket or 21 feet from the backboard. That research revealed that the coaches were in favor two to one the players and, and the spectators overwhelmingly in favor, if you would, John. And our shooting percentage was at 38% as a result of the research of the three-point field goal. The Rules Committee felt, hey, we have four or five areas we have to address. First, we wanted to open up the lane, minimize rough low post play. That's not the answer entirely. Uh, when we have more time, I'd be very happy to discuss with you about uh, my feeling about widening the, uh, the lane to the Olympic lane. We wanted more aggressive play played away from the backboard. We wanted to force that defense out to play defense on the outside pe people. We wanted to put, yes, we definitely wanted to put the long range shooter back into the ball game. We wanted to award a premium for the guy that could hit, ring the bell on the outside. To me, the home run of basketball is not the dunk. Yeah, it's the guy that can ring the bell from the outside. I see more and more newspapers saying so-and-so had four home runs today. Well, that's what we okay? call it now. We wanted to, that's right, John. I know we wanted this rule to prevail for the entire game. We have experienced in the last 20 years, John, our scoring has gone down 17 points per game. Field goal attempts per game had gone down seven, even though our shooting percentage was up compared to 20 years ago, sizably increased, if you would, John. And with the field goal scored, was down six per game. Okay, so with so those trend. factors in mind, John, that's why we adopted the three-point field goal situation. That's a trend. You're talking about trends that were happening before the field goal. Now we're going to show you some trends that have happened since the field goal. The three-point field goal has been instituted. Okay, Division One we're looking at right now. Don't forget, this is also in Division Two and Division 
three. Now, one out of every seven shots is a three-point attempt. Now, that percentage of three-pointers made this year has been 38.6%. Now, actually, what that equates to is a team shooting 58% from the two-point area. We can talk about that later. National scoring is 144.9 points a game. Of course, that is both teams combined. That's the highest since 1979, so you have got the scoring up. Overall field goal percentage, 46.4%, lowest it has been in 12 years. Now. How do you react to these trends? Are these the types of things you expected well, to see? Well, the jury's still out, John, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we expected this. Uh, we didn't expect some of the, uh, uh, the tangential things happening. Uh, for instance, we're finding and looking at it, uh, many different games that we're not experiencing it in, as an eternity to play the last two and a half, three right. minutes. Maybe the coaches haven't adjusted to, to that situation yet. But if this is the case, and this, it has to be a benefit for the three-point field goal. Uh, I think in terms of once the coaches uh, become a little more creative, a little more innovative of how to use the three-point field goal in their offense and how to defense it, mm -hmm. I think you'll find that uh, there will be a settling down in terms of the criticism that we're experiencing. Certainly adjustments have to be made from the coaches and the players and everything as well. When we come back, we'll have more from Dr. Stites and we'll hear from Dick Vitale, what he thinks about this three-point play. Dick is standing by. There's your halftime score of the first game, a big lead for Pitt. We'll be back. Tonight's halftime report is brought to you by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Mobile One protects your engine better than any conventional motor oil. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. No matter what you drive, or how you drive, or where you drive, or what conditions you drive under, with Mobile Synthetic Oil technology, there's no finer engine protection anywhere. Mobile One, on the leading edge of mobile motor oils. The great Nissan truck countdown continues and the drive to set new sales records in just 14 days. To the south. With the choice of 3.9% financing or up to $800 cash back, hard body trucks are flying out of here. To the west. The savings are tremendous on every hard body truck with sticker prices starting at $65.99. Back east, Nissan hard bodies, the only import trucks with available V6 power, are going like wildfire. There you have it. The time to save is now during the great Nissan truck countdown. This America's Cup update is brought to you by Crum and Forster and your independent agent. We've tried real hard to make our crew work peak at the end. We've tried real hard to make our sale program peak in the end. And we've tried real hard to save some ideas in the design program for the end. And we've done that. Now we feel very confident that we're almost at 100% and that we'll perform to the maximum. And we think we'll peak, hopefully, against the Kiwis and then go on to successfully challenge for the America's Cup. Amazing, isn't it? The number of good things we accumulate as part of the good life. Things we've worked hard to acquire and would hate to lose. Crum and Forster insurance experts specialize in protecting valuable possessions. Together with your independent agent, Crum and Forster knows best how to insure homes, cars, and all the things that make the good life good. Crum and Forster and your independent agent. Experts recommending experts. We have heard from Dr. Stites on why they instituted the three-point play and why it is a good thing for college basketball. Now we will hear from someone who thinks that the three-point play was a good thing as we look at the coaches poll and see what some of these coaches think. We polled the coaches from around the NCAA Division I. Do you approve of the three-point play? 219 of 278 Division I coaches responded. 46% said no. Now, of those that said yes, 23% said yes from the current distance. 31% said yes, but further back. Now, you must add those second two numbers together, 31% plus a 23%. We have 54% that do like the three-point play in some form or another, so that is a majority. Let's now go into Evanston, Illinois, and Dick Vitale and see what Dick Vitale thinks about this three-point play. We know you're outspoken on everything else, Dick. What about it? Hey. 
hey, John, I listened to uh, Ed Stites give his reasons for it. My argument is simply they never gave the coaches a chance to prepare for it, to recruit that specialist, that player. They rammed that thing through so quickly, and I thought that was definitely unfair to the coaches. Number two, it's dominating the game. I don't know how Ed Stites could think any other way, but when a kid can make 12 out of 14, average shooters coming down, shooting over 40% in some games, I know the national norm is 38.6%. 40% approximately of every attempt of a three-point shot is made. That's not healthy for the game. The game of basketball was designed simply for cutting, screening, the high percentage shot, shot selection. You go to clinics across America. I'm not against the... I'm not against the three-point play, Ed. I'm against the distance. You have it now where every Tom, Dick, and Harry can't shoot the three-point play. That's not healthy. Dick, it's not quite so. I... Uh, I feel this way. We have to look to see what the data shows at the end of the year. Not just in Division One. Not just in Division One, Dick. We have to look at Division Two and Division Three. We have to look at all facets of the game. The jury is still out as far as I'm concerned. And I will say this, and the Rules Committee feels this way. If the concept is sound, which I personally believe it is, and the members of the Rules Committee likewise feel it is sound, there's nothing that's in concrete that we couldn't move it back nine inches, the Olympic distance, or a foot back. Is this something, we... Dr. Stice, though, that you will definitely look into? Is this something we could see changed in the next year or so? As, yep. as Dick Vitale said, he feels it's been rammed down people's throat. First could of we all, see a change uh, that quickly? Dick is wrong. My good friend Dick is wrong. It wasn't rammed down anyone's throat. Now, Dick might feel that we should give coaches one year in advance on rule changes. We feel if the concept is sound, if the rule is good, why wait? Why wait? Why wait? And that's the thinking of the Rules Committee. Going back to the point, John, if we feel that it is too short a distance, the people on the Rules Committee, extremely knowledgeable people, master's degrees, doctoral degrees, postdoctoral degrees, they're going to do the best thing for, for the game of basketball because we feel that's our responsibility. I want to make another point, John, quickly, and that is this. The coaches are great, great coaches, but the coaches and the coaches alone don't determine the destinies of the great game of You're basketball. Right. It's the news media, the electronic media, you people, the, the print media, the players, and that's what the game's all about. It has to be for everyone. And it's for the fans. We're running we out of time. Account, we take into account the coaches say, but States. they're not at all. John, I'm going to make one closing bet with you. I'll bet you five years from now, steak against the hamburger, people will say, what was all that furor about the three-point field goal about? Certainly nothing. We'll come back in five years and find out. We're going to be going to the break right now and back with more college basketball, the second half in just a moment. Stay tuned. ESPN's college basketball pit has a big lead over Syracuse at the Carry Dome. We'll be back. And you can print that. But the really big news is that I personally have made some big deals. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. There's one big deal you haven't made. <laughs> Every locker room's got to have its jokester, huh? <laughs> I'm talking about a deal on Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated? Yeah. Yeah, see, Sports Illustrated gives you the feeling. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Like how it feels to get caught in heavy Sunday traffic. <laughs> come out and give it your best shot. Ah, and how it feels to steal the show. <laughs> we know that, kid. What's the news? Savings are more than 50% off the cover price. Oh, well, 50%? Shh. Yeah, subscribe now and get 27 action-packed weeks for three installments of just $9.79 each. That's baseball, football, basketball, and more. You're a real hit, kid. I'll give you hits. What about a free videotape? The NFL Crunch Course. Since 43 minutes of the NFL's greatest hits, makes a smashing gift, and it's free with your paid subscription. Free. Shh. Any more news, kid? Plus, you get their 87 baseball preview with schedule and their famous oh. swimsuit issue. It's a journalistic expose that promises to be the media event of the year. Oh, wow, Major League. Yeah, just call their toll-free number. You can even use your credit card. Let me get the facts straight, Mac. 27 weeks of the savings of 50%? Over 50. Over 50%. Plus the baseball preview, the schedule, the swimsuit issue, and the free NFL Crunch Course tape. And that, gentlemen, is the big news. Sir, may we ask you one last question? Certainly, I know you boys want my... Where are the phones? 
That'll be all. Get the savings, the schedule, the special issues, the free crunch course tape, and get the feeling. What was that number, kid? One eight hundred. Sports Illustrated. Get the feeling. ESPN viewers, call one eight hundred six two one three eight hundred. ESPN's college basketball, Pittsburgh at Syracuse, brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I want to thank Dr. Ed Stice for joining us here in our halftime report, talking about the three-point play. Right now, we're done talking about it, so let's go to where they're shooting the three-point plays. And back to Mike Gorman and Bill Raftery. Gentlemen. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome at Big East Basketball. The Pittsburgh Panthers up by 11, a surprise at the half, 43-32. Mike Gorman along with Bill Raftery and a much more disciplined Pittsburgh club than we saw last Monday night against well, St. John's. We heard all six weeks of preseason in December they were disciplined. Now they are. They're under control. They ran their breaks. Other than a few ill-advised shots by Curtis Aiken, who finally got it in, I thought they played very well. A couple of corner jumpers. Mm -hmm. He was just trying oh. to get himself in the game. <laughs> this guy is in the game, oh. Charles Smith. Charlie, my boy. Unbelievable. Pump fakes. He got people up in the air, stepping across. Just had a terrific half. Great stats. Four for seven, four for six. And here's your man, not from Rome, Jerome Lane. The end of this just tipping the basketball and they ran the floor i thought very well held up you see lane getting in position this is where curtis aiken i think can be invaluable we know he can shoot but get it into the big guys keep them happy down low jerome lane 11 first half points and he had nine rebounds comes in averaging 13 a game and as you can see pittsburgh just a selective 27 shots, and they buried 18 of them. On the road, if you shoot over 50, you feel you got a shot. 67, you got to take one home. Three-point field goals. Pittsburgh again, perfect. Syracuse, we may see that number grow with Greg Monroe in the second half. Free throws, trips pretty much even, but Syracuse unable to convert. Two of nine, five of eight for Pittsburgh, so they pick up three points there. And there you see the rebounds, even at 19 apiece. However, Jerome Lane has been such a major factor that first shot of G. Manji. Mike, you got some information? Yeah, Jimmy Burr pulled a muscle. And you saw that play where it looked like I thought he was cramping in the first half. He pulled a muscle. So G. Manji, who just doesn't want to turn around for our camera right now. There you go. At the end of the first half here, there, there was a jump ball just as the buzzer went off. And Jimmy Beheim wanted the arrow pointing in his direction as they came back, begging, pleading. They're giving me a break. I'm right here in Syracuse, but uh, good call. It really wasn't anybody's possession as the horn went off. All right, the Syracuse crowd will try to get in this. There you see, best in the Big East, but not tonight. Right, Goodson's on the floor with Demetrius Gore, Jerome Lane, Charles Smith, and Curtis Aiken. Watch out for Gore in the second half. He was very quiet in that first half. And he can explode offensively. That's Smith a man. Sent back at him by Trish. Tipped the head to Monroe. On the break, Douglas finds Trish for two. Good control. Monroe. Just a lane enough to find Sherman Douglas. Syracuse comes with the pressure. There's the trap by Coleman. Near turnover by Smith at half court. Now he finds Aiken and Goodson will pull it out. You knew they were going to take a run hard early. The man to man by Syracuse. Syracuse has been very successful this year, scoring in spurts. A close game with Villanova was broken open late last week. Gore can't answer, cycling. Monroe up quickly to Trish. Douglas for three. Now Lane looking to run the other way, and Aiken's got a couple of people with him. Good control again. I get a kick out of Curtis Aiken. He wants to really go up and take it. He's saying to Goodson, what are you doing calming it down? High low again. Gore was wide open underneath, and they didn't see him. Smith, though, gets to. Again, able to get it where they want when they're patient. Pittsburgh's 2 3 has been puzzling for Syracuse. They have to get it in deep. I think they got to get it to Coleman. 
Trish takes the leaner. Rebound to Gore off quickly to Goodson. Mike Goodson. Should be a push. Jerome Lane extended yep. the arm. Good call. Larry Limbo right on it. First foul on Pittsburgh here in the second half as Lane walks the other way. Just the first on Jerome Lane, too. Syracuse can get this down into single figures if they convert this trip. Gore's got to play Coleman on that side. See Ronnie Sykley rotating on top. Sykley kicks it out to Trish. Oof, Ronnie with a silly one. It's number three. That's almost frustration. Unable to look low, he kicked it out. A little surprise, Bill, in that uh, I'm sure it's not by design necessarily, but Trish is ending up with the shots on the offensive end. Here's Smith taking it strong to the bucket. Won't go down. Got it back, though, with Lane, who lays it in. And Cycli bumped, too, but you can see they only had two offensive rebounds pit in the first half to eight. Now, they've been out-rebounding people 14 on the offensive glass. But I think Trish is getting it because of good inside defense. Douglas, the runner. He got it. And again, you think of Trish Moore as a player who picks up a lot of loose balls, as you saw him scrambling there. Get some rebound buckets, but you don't think of the offense going to him. Nice play. Lane for two. What body control by Charles Smith. A lot of other players would have run right over Ronnie Cycli. This has just been a solid 23-plus minutes now. A basketball from Pittsburgh. Cycli. Rebound to Gore. Pittsburgh off and running. Oh. Lane again. Foul down low. And did you see the strength? Number four on Ronnie Cycli beating him down the floor. Judgments are correct. And upper body strength. You're not going to arm wrestle Jerome Lane, but Gore under control. Watch the ward off without fouling. Ooh. Good control. 16 39 to play in this one. An upset in the making. Hit 15. Your life is changing, and State Farm is there. I'm State Farm agent Jim McConnell. Terry Saylor's life insurance started out pretty simple. Then there were three children, two new mortgages, a big job promotion for Terry, and for Mrs. Saylor, a life plan of her own. Seven updates in just six years. State Farm agents are there to start you out with life insurance that works for you. And like a good neighbor. And we're there to keep it working for you. State Farm. Ours, as you know, is not a perfect world. May I? That's why it's so refreshing when something really perfect comes along. Like Diet Coke. Tastes great straight, or on the rocks. Yet it's just one calorie. That's why Diet Coke is the perfect soft drink. <laughs> For an imperfect world. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. We are back in Syracuse, and it is quiet in the Dome. 51-36, Pittsburgh by 15. This is usually a place, Bill, where you can't hear yourself think. Uh, it's quiet for a good reason. I think Paul Evans may have reached, it took a loss to St. John's, may have reached his club. They are making outstanding judgments, and of course, a night like that for Jerome Lane, he can be devastating in low, running the break. That time, he was the end of the break. Frequently, he's the guy that makes the play. Well, one of the things I, I was going to remark to as, as Pittsburgh break the last time, Jerome Lane is at the line. You see Ronnie Cycli now carrying those four fouls on the bench. Coleman rebounds the miss. That in lane and in gore, they have two forwards who can not only get the rebound, but start the break themselves. Come out dribbling from the What pass. an asset that is. You're right. Trish again looking for the offense. Of course, with Cycli out, it might look like we go to Coleman just a little bit more. He may be more active. Demetrius Gore picks it across to Aiken. Syracuse man to man in the beginning of the half. 
Four. Little up fake on Trish, and he hit it. I thought you're playing a club if you're Syracuse that feels good about themselves, is it? Inner glow and confidence. Who they ever? Really a all business out here. Brower inside. Coleman won't get down. Goes and gets it. And a foul is called. Demetrius Gore reaching in. Uh, Gore's at a distinct height disadvantage with Coleman. That's the high-low sequence again that Syracuse uses so well. See him now. He'll hide low. The nice dump down. Just unable to convert. Harsh with the delivery. But Gore, a few inches smaller. Tenth point of the night for Derek Coleman. The crowd again tries to rally this club. Catch a break there, Bill? I think so. The crowd refereeing pretty good. Aiken with good penetration and good call. Brower oh, with, with the leg tackle. But again, Curtis tries to initiate things and fortunate to get a break. Jimmy didn't like that non-walk call earlier. Cycle is going to have to weather another eight or nine minutes, one would think, on the bench. Aiken thought it was a shooting foul. Yeah, Ronnie somewhat frustrated tonight. Moore looking inside of the lane. Wants to go into him. It's kicked out of bounds. Pittsburgh, 68% shooting tonight. They may all get a day off tomorrow. <laughs> Aiken in low lane, blocking a foul on Coleman. What is great play by young people. Two youngsters knowing the game, Coleman trying not to foul, Lean knowing he was at a height disadvantage, able to extend and draw the body. Just the first foul on Derek Coleman as we look at your own lane. This, this has been, Bill, for going on 25 minutes now, as consistent an effort as I've seen out of a college basketball team this year. I mean, it's just been solid from the get-go. They are a talented team, and all they need is a nice little play by Greg Monroe. Trish again. Trish yep. is keeping Syracuse in this right now. I think he's a key to their club. Everybody talks about the marquee players. I mentioned earlier, he's the glue. Aiken, a runner. Got it. A little clear out for him. You kind of shrug your shoulders when he uh, put it up, Bill. That uh, was a tough goal. But the clear out, he figured it was his play. So his number was called. In the corner, Douglas. Trish again. Lost his footing on the way through. But Brower, the loose ball, tipped out of bounds by Gore. Syracuse ball, 28 seconds on the shot clock, 14, 28 to play in the game. Syracuse trying to force it in now, trying to initiate the play and, of course, get something going for their club. It has done a nice job staying in contact with Monroe, who hasn't had any chance to launch any three-pointers. These guys are stepping up, making it tough inside. I'm going to give Brower that shot if he wants it. Trish again. Called with a foul. <laughs> Not a good one. No. Out there. Jerome with his second. Paul Evans just slowly shaking his head over there. You, know, you mentioned he was the team might be given a day off. He was given the day off after a terrific effort against St. John's. Everybody else had to stay for practice. Not Jerome, huh? points now on the night for Trish and seven of those have come here in the second half. That's better than half the Syracuse total here in the second half. Good test for Syracuse now. Mentally down at home. 
whether they'll be patient enough, whether they can suck it up defensively. Aiken looks fine. Smith, great help. Short with the jumper, but Gore is there. Good look for Lane. Well, they've got some answers tonight. 20 points now for Jerome Lane. Pretty good interior passing. Excellent interior passing. Very, very unselfish play by Pittsburgh tonight. They have played with really six players. There's a steal by Smith. There's one of the forwards who can run the break. Demetrius Gore. Look at that rebound by Lane. It should be, should be on Brower. No question. I can't believe Lane offensively. Just incredible going to the glass. Gore got away with a couple of carries. He was bringing the living room furniture as he weaved his way down the floor, cupping the groceries under the one arm. Four fouls on Brower, so he joined Cycli on the bench. You see Steve Thompson coming in. Herman Harid is also checked in. Greg Monroe is going to sit down. Cycli and Brower with four apiece. Goodson barely in trouble with three. It just hasn't done much wrong, except that alley oop was a little weak. Here oh. comes Douglas. A runner, Douglas, forced it up. What a tip. A Reed trying to keep it alive. Picked off by Goodson. A lot of blue shirts up the floor. He's going to pull it out. That's the patience. Herman, a Reed up big. After the, after the out of bounds, Sergeant went two, three, now they're back at it. I think I'd rather test the outside shooting than the inside game to pit tonight. Goodson, and Thompson got a Look piece it. of it, but Lane is there. Jump ball. It'll be Syracuse basketball in the alternating possession. How did Lane get that, Mike? I mean, he just seems to be so aware for misses or shots that are short. Everybody asleep except him and Colin with an excellent block. Syracuse unable to crack down into that 12-10 point margin here. Now 11 at the half, got themselves in a quick hole to begin the second half. Pittsburgh just pulls them off. Thompson with the ball, pretty good deep shooter. Always looking when they come high for the low man. But look at this going down. They're like 12 on the shot clock now. It's the defense. Thompson. Got it. Crenshaw. First bucket for Steve Thompson, the Los Angeles High School Player of the Year in the last two years. Here's the man to man. Crowd getting into it. This is where Pitt should use some clock. Try and come up with a real good one in tight. Steal by Thompson. Takes it himself. No, but a foul is called. A blocking foul is going to go on Goodson, and now he's got four. Well, Beheim wants goaltending, but Larry Limbo is 100% right. This is below the rim, but a spark. Thompson with the jumper, the steal, and now he's just got his feet a little bit tangled. Comes up short, but that is on the way up. A good non-call. Shot of Ed Bozik, the AD, right there in town. Right, Gene Mongey, who was officiating the second half of this game, hands it to Thompson. Ed, of course, one of the directors in the league. Yeah, athletic director at Pitt. Steve now looking for the second of two. Mongey's a glutton, right? A night off. Dave, right. <laughs> Dave Gavitt, the commissioner, with an official lady in advance. Just under 12 to play. Pitt still up there. The Civic four-door sedan that's back into it slowly. Last, there's a roomy trunk. Next to last, room for adults in back. Then a comfortable driver's seat and a low hood for better visibility. Now you've got something to look forward to. Successful investing doesn't happen overnight. 
It takes patience, discipline, and perseverance. Because performance isn't something you measure in days or months, but in years and generations. Through good years and bad, Butcher and Singer has helped families seeking financial growth through investments that stand the test of time. Butcher and Singer Incorporated, Main Street, East Johnstown, and North 6th Street, Indiana. 58-47, Paul Evans, happy with Jerome Lane last week. St. John's game. Roy, we came into practice and saw the films after the St. John's game, and we, after watching the films, I said, uh, Jerome, you're out of here. And he looked at me in surprise, and I said, this time for the right reasons, and he was one of the most consistent players we've had for a while. But from Coach Evans, I don't expect anything good from him. So when he said that and asked any questions why I should leave, I just got out of there. <laughs> that was my reaction, just to leave. Don't ask any questions. Be happy that he said, let's go. <laughs> oh, this is don't ask guy. any questions, huh? Don't, don't question the coach. He's going to get tomorrow off at this rate. <laughs> 22 points, 10 rebounds for Jerome Lane tonight. A little pressure now. Kavanaugh in. He's got to be tough. Step through. Douglas to strip. And Kavanaugh able to find the handle. Tipped away underneath for Reed. Coleman gets it out on the break. Douglas. Nice. Got it. Hesitate. Pitt's getting into the bad judgment area right now. Needs to be controlled. Curtis Aiken feeds off to Smith. Has to track down the pass. And now they'll kick it back out. A lot of pressure on Pat Kavanaugh. Aiken can't hit baseline, but Lane kept it alive. Tipped away Thompson out of bounds. That's what a home court is for. Right now, Syracuse completely ripped up. They have the lead under 10 for the first time here in the second half. It's at 9. Rod Brooken, you see, has come back in. Had a strong first half. Aiken becomes the point guard totally. Zone and a trap out of the out of bounds. Good step through. Brooken nearly had it tipped away by Thompson. Aiken had a thought. Goes inside. A better thought. Smith has got two. Great post pass. Aiken had a thought. Twindy. 11 point Pittsburgh lead. Thompson. Gore goes down in the middle, pass too hard, and it's picked off by Lane on the break to Gore. Takes it at Harid, and the foul is going to go on Herman Harid. No way Demetrius Gore was backing off on that. <laughs> no, I was thinking maybe he'll fan dribble, but uh, I withdrew the thought. Jerome Lane again coming up with the loose basketball, an alert pit team, and this is his pass, a gamble right here. I thought Demetrius might delay, but... All the kids can do it now. Hang a little, throw that body, wait for the whistle. Put it up, pull it back. <laughs> Jim Behan talking with Steve Thompson. Greg Monroe back into the ball game for Syracuse. Like he had a good run other than that pass, Stevie Thompson. But he played well. Just the fifth point of the night for Demetrius Gore. Gore has done a lot of other things out here. It's two or three. Very unselfish plays, has rebounded well, and now he's got a half dozen. Came in averaging 16 a game. 13-point Pittsburgh lead. We are just about halfway through this second half. Near steal by Gore, foul Aiken outside. So cycling on the bench, I would think if it stays 12, 13, right in there, Jimmy will hold it. Just for a couple of minutes. If, if they can make a run, he'll hold them longer. I think he's just waiting to see what happens for the next two minutes. Do so you figure about eight? I figure about eight. He'll come with them, maybe seven, if they can get it closer. If it starts stretching out, you'll see him right away. Kick it to Monroe in the corner. Again, they'd like to free him up for a three. A read sent back at him by Smith. Still 25 on the shot clock. Herman will think twice about that oh. one next time. Uh, again, the walk. Yep. Chris took the little jump step. Well, what happens is you catch it and jump into space, then you take another one. Good cut and pass. Results weren't very good for Syracuse. And Gore cracks the 10-second line again. Gore, Lane, Aiken, 
probably Brooke and all capable of bringing the ball up. Well, I think Curtis Aiken has to forget offense now and run his club. If Pitt wants to win without Goodson on the floor, he has to look for others. Jerome Lane kicks it off to Brooke. And Pitt's taking a very solid 25 seconds off the shot clock here. Good Syracuse defense has really helped Pitt get some Smith. composure. Puts it up, won't go down, got it back, stripped underneath, out of bounds. What effort, Trish got a hand in there to knock it out, but you think he pumped fake enough? And Syracuse really wanted a travel call, and, and Smith seemed to slide through the lane there a little bit. Of course, Derek Coleman will make you slide a little bit. Yeah. Pitt, though, with a fresh 45. Gore lost it, but Lane picks it off. Okay, nice control. Oh, very nice control. And again, I'm sure Paul Evans would like to see him take another 25 off here. I'll bet Paul complimented St. John so much. It's <laughs> sort of stuck now in Pitt's head. Control the game, know what's a good shot. Smith wants it. Yeah. Coleman's right there. Smith goes back again, and he got it. Boy, is he hanging in and going after it. Has not played well over the years in his four games. 12 points and seven rebounds has been his average. And of course, we've seen him do better than that. But tonight, he's on cue. Certainly is. 18 for Charles Smith, 20 for Lane. Syracuse just cannot oh. solve the defense of Pittsburgh. Well, they've got the passing lanes covered. They've stepped up the back line about four feet from the backboard, just making it awfully hard to get it to the right spots. You look out there. Monroe can't hit for three. Rebound, guess who? <laughs> Aiken forgot he's got... Curtis is the point guard. He was taking off ready to woo-woo. About to go under eight minutes to play in the game. Hit by 15. Uh, Charles got tied up with Derek Coleman. The giveaway, wasted trip in the post lane. And Charles has been very intelligent all evening. Of course, Coleman has been somebody you see the grab by both, and it's usually the other guy that gets called, huh? Mm. Derek. He may have gotten that. Might have let him play through that one. <laughs> no question. He might have. Got that call at Northern High. Yeah. Not here. Douglas. Cycling back into the ball game. And he hadn't made any runs, so Jimmy Beheim going for it. Douglas in and out, and that's been the story for Syracuse. On the break, Aiken. Left-handed move won't get down. Brook and strong rebound and a hoop. Uh, the old story about wanting things more. Yep. Right now looks like Pitt into the into the game. And Syracuse. I mean, I want to say they're on the verge of getting blown out. They are getting blown out right now. 66-49 and needing points in a hurry. Again, they've gone 25 seconds in the shot clock now. They can't get a shot. Down to seven minutes as well. Monroe for three. Now this will put the test, the pick. The next six minutes, if they can run a play, only take a shot early if it's a good one. And run as much time as you can. See the shot clock up there, top of the basket. They're down 30 seconds, loose on the floor, cycling, stolen back, and a travel on Pittsburgh. It'll be Syracuse ball. Aiken Sherman helped great. up. Six and a half to go in this one. Syracuse needs to get off. This spuds for all that you do. It could be any time now. No, Bill had to leave. Can I help you? A friend is counting on you. We need copies by 4.30. I'll cover it for you. Not a word. You keep on coming through, cause you, you make America work, and this one's for you. Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This one's for you. Jack Rafferty proves you just can't tell. The fellas that I work with are pretty perceptive. They don't miss too much. No one had picked up the fact that the gray was gone from my hair. It was that simple. 
No one realized I was using the Grecian form of the 16. It was so gradual. The Grecian has a natural look about it. It's not a dye, it's a, it's, it's a clear liquid. The questions most asked by the fellows at work were, what are you doing, you're working out, are you losing weight? And unless I told them I was using the Grecian form of the 16, they never would have guessed. Grecian Formula 16, you just can't tell as you... Six and a half to play here at the Carrier Dome. Let's take a look around the Big East. There was some fear by some people around the Big East that Syracuse might just run away and hide. I guess <laughs> somebody found out where they're hiding here tonight, namely Pittsburgh. And Georgetown with a great win over the Paul. Knocked them from the ranks of unbeaten. And Wednesday night, Georgetown Providence, a great one. And Boston College, Connecticut, a game that you and I will be doing tomorrow night. A couple of teams that are struggling right now in the Big East. We'll see what they look like. Dana Barrow's fine, fine guard for Boston College. There is the dome knitter. Uh, she might be able to do a wardrobe tonight. A long evening for Syracuse. And as you can see, Pittsburgh has never won a game in the Carrier Dome. Last game they won in Syracuse was, I believe, at the old War Memorial Auditorium back in about 61. So it's been 25 years since a Pittsburgh team has won a game up here. Nobody won too much at Manly towards the end there. <laughs> oh. Of course, Georgetown beat him in that last one, right? Yep. They got a 10. Oh, they didn't start the uh, shot clock. 45 second clock. Game clock was moving, but no one started the shot clock. And they're gonna what come up with four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. No, a fresh 45. Now you're right, they're counting that again. But the zone of Pittsburgh controlling, right? Circus, oh. I mean, they haven't been able to deploy or get it where they want. I, I want to ask you about music. Is it, are they better athletes in the zone? Uh, I think they're more active. I think they're cutting off the lane. You see Aiken helping out on Trish. They're up on the shooter. You mentioned Monroe not able to get free for one. Even there, tough shot. Bang it home, though. Ooh, Gore not far away. Second three-pointer in a row for Monroe, and it's down to 11. Plenty of time, and Syracuse can get it cranked up. Smith has got cycling. Triple team to Sherman Douglas came to help and a three second violation. Brings a smile to the face of Paul Evans over there on the Pittsburgh bench. Well, uh, coaching wise, you don't see it called all night. You hate to see it called down with five minutes, but Charles unable to find anybody. He was in there more than three. Monroe. Rebound, Brooklyn. That may have been a big shot with 5.40 to go in this game. So I think Pitt's got to run, but then use judgment. Unless it's a real good break, bring it back out. Because I think if they slow it down completely, they can get out of sync. Yep, I agree with you. Definitely agree with you on that. Oh, Cycli the steal. Ahead to Douglas. Lane is back. Fucked by Lane, but a foul. Bad pass, but great defense, and once again, Douglas at the end of it, he's been giving them a good effort, Syracuse. You love your big guy to front the post, and of course, all the guards know how to lean on people, make the contact. Third foul on Jerome Lane. Sherman Douglas, an 80% free throw shooter. He's got a dozen. More importantly, the lead is now 10. Six thousand plus. We're back in the game. The freshman broken. Goal. Inside lane. Right spot for two. Uh, lane hasn't touched the ball, but he was getting in position for the offensive rebound. They've been going to Charles Smith. Jerome Lane should get it. Douglas won't go down. Loose. Coleman and Smith go for it. Jump ball is called. It'll be Pittsburgh ball. Coleman not wanting to give it up. Getting a little tougher to run things for Paul Evans. The offense is having some problems. That man has to be on the floor. Well, Goodson is back in now. 
Mike Goodson essential see how, directed very well all night now let's see how much time they do take off the shot clock this trip Smith kicks it back out Charles is unselfish he'll kick it back down normally doesn't take a bad shot a high low now with Lane on top Aiken takes a tougher shot than he had oh, the first oh, time and buried it. <laughs> For what reason did he pass up the easy one again? Reacting defensively. Curtis. 4-11 to go. And a timeout has been called. Pittsburgh just won't let go here. They're up 13. Nothing escapes the eye of Maxim. The world's first SLR with built-in autofocus, Minolta Maxim focuses by itself. Sharp, fast, only the human eye focuses faster. With Minolta Maxim, you even get unexpected shots that would have gotten away. The incredible Maxim system. Only from the mind of Minolta. Your face takes enough abuse without your disposable razor hurting it more. Now, Gillette introduces Good News Plus, the new disposable with a white Lubra Smooth Strip designed to reduce pulling and skin irritation. Hurts so bad. Finally, there's a disposable that feels so good. Good News Plus, new from Gillette, the essence of shaving. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome, everybody. Some of the 26,000 here. Trying to pull Syracuse three. Pittsburgh ahead by 13. I know there's a lot of time left here as we look at Jim Beheim. I know Syracuse is a very capable team that can make up this deficit in this time. But if they don't, Bill, I have the feeling that, that Paul Evans and the University of Pittsburgh have truly arrived in the Big East uh, they're on, with the win tonight. Uh, absolutely. I think he's been after a win that'll give them confidence. Syracuse needs to think scoring the great hot shooting all night by Pitt. And of course, today, Pitt worked against the press. So we'll see how they'll handle it. I'm sure Jimmy Bayham will go to it. Monroe for three, and he got it. 13 for Monroe. That was a curious look. That may have been a triangle in two. It's down to 10. Again, we'll keep an eye on what Pittsburgh does to the shot clock here. Aiken misses the layup. Brook in the loose ball and a fresh 45. And Paul Evans up with both hands in the air. The traffic cop. And Goodson hollering. Smith. Coleman the block and the foul. What a pass by Brookin. That's the hardest pass in basketball. The loop, getting it to the correct hand. But again, Mike Goodson with control, hollering for the ball out. Look at this pass. Baseline. Right the button. Oh. <laughs> and Charles, just a great night. Coleman just giving it up. More out of not being there at the right time. Second foul on Coleman. Not that that's going to mean a whole lot. Both teams are over the limit. So Smith. See four of six shooting at the line tonight. Big free throw. 19 now for Charles Smith. Don't forget more basketball. Coming up here on ESPN tonight. John Sanders and Dick Vitale standing by with our Big Ten game. Syracuse after that big win over St. John's with a practice yesterday and not really into it, but Pitt, the reason, I think they just come out the aggressor and maintained it. Monroe coming back out. He's going to look for another three. Man Time man. a major factor now as we're hitting the three-minute mark. Man of man, Mike, I mentioned I thought it may have been a new look triangle and two, but it's man. Coleman, the left hand, gets it back. Coleman blocked by Smith again, and a foul call this time, and Charles Smith picks it up. 
Charles admitting he fouled him, but Derek Coleman showing you his ability, tenacity, again, good baseline pass. Look at the follow, the activity, tipping to himself, getting down again in position. Charles just making sure there's no goal. It's a great battle between two players who will see each other at least for another year. I would say... A feeling both of them may see each other for a long time, yeah. <laughs> no question. I think Jimmy Beheim composed there, obviously knowing his team isn't playing their A game. Not doing the little things tonight that he's been so used to with this club. Mike Goodson again in to run the show with the four fouls. Charles Smith saying, take it easy out there. Great poise. It really is. There you see the shot clock. I've just chopped 25 seconds off and with an 11-point lead, I mean, that's as good as two points. And now Coleman is called outside for the foul. I know the audience is upset with the officials, but it's more over the possibility of losing than the correct call. I think they've been right on it. Yeah, I think they have been right on this game tonight. All right, Jerome Lane is going to take us 22 points to the free throw line. 24, okay. String, hold it. But again, alert, feeding him to the basketball. Needs to foul here. Lane tried to dump it off. Coleman got a hand on it. Smith and Goodson exchanging the passes. Under two minutes now to play in the game. Very impressive. Very, kind of, very impressive one. Got a hand at the pin. You don't want dribble exchanges in those situations. That's when you bring your man into a trap. Goodson, the runner. Surprised that didn't fall, but he picked up the foul. The way things have been going for Pitt tonight. Well, again, it was down to eight. Stevie Thompson caught behind. Soft touch. I think Goodson has proven himself. How about you? No, I think he has. In the two weeks that we have seen him play, again, a lot of people felt coming into the season that maybe that was the link that could be picked on with this Pittsburgh club. But Mike Goodson has really acquitted himself very well, even though it was a loss to St. John's last week very well again here tonight a very tough place to play and Pittsburgh has come in they lead by a dozen with 145 and again this is the biggest road win in the history of Pittsburgh in the Big East well I've been to Syracuse often I seldom if ever seen a crowd leave early because Syracuse was behind good tip home and the tip over the top that pass out of the pack, though, comes Brooklyn, and the foul is going to be on Sherman Douglas. 1.29 to play. Jim Behan. Sherman Douglas. Back down on the bench. See Howard Trish with a hand on top of his head. Well, I think Jimmy Beheim has to do exactly what Paul Evans did. Learn something from a loss. You know, you're dealing with young people. Occasionally... They believe they just have to show up, may not respect the opponent. Yeah. So all of those things have to be reinforced. And of course, Jimmy's been reinforcing a lot of years. One of those 25 each season. A little goaltender there by Ronnie Cycli, and he's had a very tough night. Wayne Morgan. Brooklyn just gets one point out of that. But the lead is at 13, and there's a minute 25 to go in the game. Uh, throwing things, and... You don't want anybody hurt, but no. uh, Stevie Thompson almost got hit. Thompson's inbound. Syracuse will fall to 17 and two and six and one in the Big East. Monroe, a deep three won't go. Smith the rebound on the break. Goodson takes it, won't go down, and the rebound is good by Brooklyn on the other side. Rebound, Smith. Foul, give away to stop the clock. I'm not so sure Pitt needs 
the shot at the end of the break. No, I don't, well, you know, Goodson was there for a while. But that's the part. They're hugging one another. This is a phenomenal win for this program. It is a major win for this program. I really don't know whether we can emphasize that enough. Oh. Pitt, Pitt has been the sleeping giant, and the sleeping giant may have finally awakened. Well, Paul Evans said today, he said, we need one. We need one for ourselves. The confidence soaring, and Mike Goodson has just stepped to the forefront early on. The questions whether he could run the show, and of course, Syracuse needs an A game from Ronnie Cycli. They did not get one this evening. Well, they didn't. Six first half points, early foul trouble. There's Keith Hughes, who has checked in for the final 64 seconds. The numbers for Charles Smith, impressive tonight. I can't ever remember, though, Bill, in the seven or eight years that I've been involved with, seven years I've been involved with Piggy's basketball, coming into the Carrier Dome and seeing a Syracuse team in a Big East game, like, dominated from the get-go, and, like, never really a run. You know, there was never a feeling in this game you thought, oh, here they come. Well, the it just never thing, came. The one thing about Pitt, you know, they're coming in, and they're confident. You know, they know they're close. And Syracuse, of course, is there, the reigning or the leading team in the conference. And if they're not ready, clubs like Pitt and Georgetown Kemp, great step in by Stevie Thompson. That's a cross court. The Syracuse is not trying to stop the clock at all. Not at all. No, not using the timeouts. No. I think Jimmy has conceded. Yes, I think he has too. Steve Thompson on Mike Goodson, and he pulls him right back up. 26 seconds to play, and from about two and a half minutes on down, there was a uh, no real effort by by Jim Beheim to start the clock. No, no, I think he's disgusted, disappointed. Obviously, I mean he's coaching on the bench now too. He's talking to all the players that have come out. He's got Trish on one side, Coleman on the other. These Jersey guys are tough, huh? Mike Goodson out of Elizabeth High School. Derek Coleman, who will have some great moments here in the Carrier Dome before he's through. 80-65, 15-point Pittsburgh lead. Douglas hits the three-pointer. Impressive even in defeat. Chairman Douglas does an awful lot of things. To Timeout now for fear of a five-second violation, and they're staying well, here. No, they're going to stay right here. here. Just, that's right. right. They have the option. Take the timeout, but we don't want to leave the floor. Aiken kicks it up to Lane. A little high dribble. He can handle the ball, though. <laughs> he can do an awful lot of things. You know, that timeout called to save the basketball, a good one, and Paul Evans not wanting to rub it in at all. Let him take it out. All right, the last time that Paul Evans was in the Carrier Dome. Very, very similar results to what we see here. Led Navy to the NCAA tourney win at the Carrier Dome last year, and it was indeed a blowout mm. as they did it. They were, of course, David Robinson. And a smile again. Yeah. Going to have one tonight. I have Lane unofficially for 25. Layup on the other end goes. Final five seconds are about to be ticked off. They stopped the clock at three. Now it's coming in. Long down and out to Lane. He'll take it. It's a fitting end to this one, folks. 27 points for Jerome Lane and Pittsburgh. A big, big win here in the Carrier Dome. They dominate from the opening tip and win it by a score of 84. The 70. Along with Phil Rafter, I'm Mike Gorman. Let's check in right now with John Saunders back at the studio. John?